Okay, so we're going to go over today how to um, look at a problem with the igniter on an M1M furnace. Also, they're changing that model to an MG1 or an MG or an RG1, but still the same igniter, still the same um, parts on these. So we're going to just look at that and see how um, to check that out. And we're going to see, for instance, how do we know if it's a bad igniter or not? So these igniters are working off of continuity. So say the um, furnace is saying ignition failure. It's the flash code on that. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's an igniter. Um, it probably means that it's an igniter, but there's some other reasons like um, you know, maybe the valve isn't working, maybe the gas is shut off, uh, clogged valve, um, the air intake is usually going to have to do with the pressure system, so that's usually can be ruled out. So if you're getting to the um, igniter where you're testing here where you're getting power but no ignition, um, that usually means the igniter, so you means you're past the pressure system on this furnace. So we're going to look at um, how you do that. All you do to check for continuity on this um, is you get a tester that tests for continuity. Me, I like to make sure that mine has that little beeper on there. Um, kind of tells me a little bit. It's just going to change. You can see if you can see here on my uh, continuity tester. You definitely need a continuity tester to test the igniter. So we can see and it's going to change on the continuity there. It's going to give us some, some resistance there, okay? So we're going to set this over here and we're going to take our plug apart for the igniter. This is the igniter, goes in right there. These are for the uh, electrification for the gas valve. Um, right there we're going to disconnect the plug, okay? This is the power side, power is the plug. This is the um, actual uh, the plug itself, so we're going to test that. We're going to test, there's two little wire two little metal pieces in there and we're going to listen. That tells us that this one is good. So we're just putting our tester and we're going to put our tester in here. That tells us, okay, that this igniter is good. So let's move on to the next problem um, if, it's, if that tests out good. So um, if this did say it, is, it um, didn't test out good, we'll go over how to uh, replace the igniter and how we do that. Again, we're just going to disconnect here, okay? We're going to pull these two pieces off here. Hopefully your gas valve here is on a flex line. So again, this is a 5 16 two little screws here. There's a few different valves that it is, but still about the same bracket. This little screw here sometimes will have a bracket setting off there. Just get these two pieces off here and you just kind of wiggle, that comes right out, okay? One of the things you want to check here, sometimes an, uh, the failed ignition has to do with this piece here being clogged by a spider. So you're going to want to take this piece off. That's the orifice. Unscrew that right here. Just unscrew that. Look down inside of there. Make sure that's all clear of cobwebs or anything. That's where spiders love to get on there. Okay. And that's a major reason for ignition failure. So again, we're going to take this straight out. Sometimes it's hard to get out. Sometimes you got to wiggle it. And then if it's on a flex line, of course, that's what we're talking about here. You can kind of take it and just kind of let it set over to the side here. Okay. And then we're going to need to take all these screws out here. Okay, and on the last screw, make sure to hold this real tight. Okay. And you're going to pull this straight out and up a little bit. Up end it back like that. Okay. And this is what that looks like. That's the igniter there. Okay. So it's going to be coming straight out, up, and we're going to look at that. And this is what we're going to try be replacing right here. So we can see if we were to take this screw out right here, which we're going to do for you. Guess I should have started on the face of this thing here. Okay, so we also need to take out this little screw plate right here, okay? Taking that little plate off. Okay. The wires will come through this way. They'll come in through there. You push them through. And I really suggest, I really suggest, because it's very important, that on this 
furnace, this on each furnace you want the correct igniter for that furnace, the furnace bracket. This one has a little bracket. Can you see that little bracket right there? That slides precisely at that angle. So when I put this in, I need that igniter to fit that much into this flame. Okay? So when I get the igniter, I'm saying I need this igniter. I don't want to get a universal. I want to get the igniter for this one. Okay? So we can see we take the screw off the back right there. Okay? And we can slide that right out. Okay? We get the new one. We put it back in. Put that screw back in there. Push the wires back through the hole. And just reverse that process. Okay, now that we, right before we put the igniter back in, it is a great opportunity to be able to look at your core. So the heat exchanger is right here. This inside here is the heat exchanger. So we're going to be able to get a great view of what that looks like. So um, a lot of times, um, furnace companies will tell you, oh, you got a lot of cracks in there. Well, you can check this out by yourself just looking at this. So um, a lot of ones on this particular model are starting to happen right in the back. This is on the older, um, the same model, but uh, when they get about 12 or 13 years old, sometimes right straight in the back or right to this side over here. You're going to look in there and there's going to be some welds and things and right along that weld is going to sometimes be a crack in there. Also, you want to lift in and lift up. There's going to be a plate inside of there. You want to check the integrity of that plate. Make sure that plate is holding stiff up there. Okay? Okay, I wanted to go over the sequence of operations for an M1M furnace for a Nordine. Um, it's also an MG1 or an RG1 furnace now. It's a Nordine or Intertherm furnace. Um, the first thing that comes on, this motor here comes on, closes this switch, which tells this circuit board that you can now turn on the igniter, which you're going to see here. You're going to open this flap here and the igniter is going to come on. And after the igniter comes on, then the gas is going to come on and ignite and then the igniter is going to go off while the flame still stays on. That's also going to show up here on the circuit board as a little green light telling you that you have a flame at this time. And after those things happen, after the flame comes on, starts the next relay timer, which at that point turns on the blowing. So first is pressure comes into the furnace, trips the switch, turns on igniter, starts the flame, starts to blow. That's the sequence of operation. Each one of those clicking sounds is just a timer going off, a relay telling it, okay, now start your timer because we want to blow for a certain time to get fresh oxygen. We want to burn for a certain time. We want the igniter to come on for a certain amount of time. All those are basic relays. Those are supposed to happen. Those clicking sounds are supposed to happen. Okay, so again, we're dealing with an M1M intertherm furnace, and I just wanted to show you what the top of this looks like. Um, so this is on top of the furnace of an M1M uh, Nordine furnace. So this is the top part of the heat exchanger. Okay, and so when you have a roof jack, you have a two-walled roof jack. This is where the exhaust comes out. This is where it pulls in fresh oxygen around here. And then it goes into the furnace, is burned um, with gas, spent gas, comes out of this and up out through the roof. All right, I also wanted to go over with you what a roof jack looks like, the piece that comes out of the top of the furnace. So um, if we look at the bottom here, that's a double walled pipe. So this one, of course, gets um, attached to the bottom. This one, I'm sorry, into that middle section above the furnace. And this one on the outside, it just goes right down over top of it. They basically have these little spacers in there so that makes it there, they stay that far apart. Um, and then on these, we can see on the top, I've taken the cap off of this one just so you can see what it looks like. See the cap just is usually attached to this. So um, that's just what the top looks like. And there's a flange on it. It goes under the shingles or on top of the metal roof. And then all uh, mobile home um, roof jacks are telescoping, meaning that they can fit different size of openings as far as um, the height. So this actually can scoot inside of itself and make this from a 27 all the way down to a 47 
or anything in there between because this piece here moves up inside of there. So just wanted to give you a look at that.